What's going on guys? Welcome back to Just Talk Smith channel. In today's video we're going to be showing you how to do the crankcase ventilation reroute at home, do it yourself, and save you quite a bit of money. Most of the kits for these are 150 plus um, and it's going to end up getting the same thing done as this although this will not have a catch can or anything like that so obviously if you're comparing it to kits with a catch can and stuff like that or bungs to weld into the exhaust to where it enters the exhaust or whatever this kit will not include that this is just going to be a vent to atmosphere kit and i'm going to go ahead and go through all of the stuff that you will need to pick up from i went to a local hardware store and picked up all of this but before we get into what all you're going to be needing i'm going to show you and explain to you kind of what this modification is let's go ahead and go over what this does so right here um, on the screen right in the center you can see that little circle that is the crankcase ventilation port coming off of the um, valve cover so normally this will have a pipe coming out of it and that will go up into your intake which i'm going to show you your intake then travels to your turbo which my turbo is currently out of the truck i will have a future video on the upgraded turbo that we went with so here is kind of what all you will need and i'm going to go over this more in depth but anyway this will connect to your turbo and then to your air box and your air filter so as you can see there's a little port on the bottom of your intake right here and normally this pipe right here will be in there in that hole and then that travels and goes onto this and then this port right here plugs down into your crankcase box in that hole that I just now showed you. So what that is in turn doing is taking all of the oils and gases and everything from your crankcase and venting all of those gases and oils and stuff like that into the intake system. So the intake system is then going to your turbo, which is normally right here, and all through your intercooler piping, all through your intake manifold, uh, and everything else which a lot of manufacturers and a lot of diesel mechanics disagree with and say that that shouldn't be done uh, they say that all those exhaust gases and stuff from the crankcase vent should be vented into the atmosphere or into the exhaust they shouldn't be rerouted and going back into the engine into its intake and cooling system so that's what we're going to eliminate this time around um, the truck is currently at 95,000 miles so it's not like it has a lot of blow by or anything like that or a lot of crankcase vent pressure so we may not even notice anything coming from this but this is just something to keep oil and soot and build up out of your whole intercooling system and the intercooler pipes and turbo and intake manifold all of that stuff to try to keep that stuff as clean as possible to where you're not rerouting all of those dirty gases and stuff from the crankcase back into the intake system and the, the cooling system pretty much so in order to eliminate that we have to use this factory port and we've got some one inch inside diameter heater core hose um, and that stuff will hold up to the oil and stuff like that i asked them about that at the hardware store so you want to get something that will withstand up to the oil and all of that stuff and it's not going to deteriorate over time so that is one inch uh, heater core hose and that will mount onto this right here along with a hose clamp. So your heater core hose will mount onto here with a hose clamp and then that's going to go down into that crankcase vent hole that I showed you and that part's going to be done. Your next issue is with the factory intake system you have a port right here so we are going to have to plug that hole this piece right here used to go into there so right here i have some quick setting epoxy and that is just a precautionary measure i'm not going to say that you necessarily have to have this it does cure in an hour and it dries clear um, and it has a 3900 psi strength and it sets in five minutes cures in an hour okay so we've got that so right here i have a three quarter PVC plug and this thing fits very nicely inside of this hole so after I push that all the way down after I coat the threads in epoxy I'm then going to put a hose clamp around that so that will have epoxy in the threads 
it will have a hose clamp torquing down on it and then I'll give that about an hour or two hours for that to set up and stuff before I put it back on the vehicle which it'll have plenty of time to cure because I already have my turbo off and I have to go through all of that so yeah um, so literally guys with just these four or five uh, ingredients you can build yourself your own crankcase vent reroute so with the factory intake being good up to about 500 horsepower that'll be fine until we get our injectors in our studs in our heads all of that stuff with the fast fuel system and all that this truck will be somewhere around 700 ish horsepower uh, once it's complete with the turbo setup that i went with which you all will soon find out in the next video um so yeah let's go ahead and get this rerouted and um then i'll show it to you all completely finished and done so we're gonna go ahead and start prepping this and getting this on yeah so we're gonna go ahead and start this now and i'll check back in with you all after we get this done Alright guys, so there it is. Once it's finished, it's coming out of the crankcase vent. It splits off and then this piece right here is actually the factory crankcase vent piece. I used it because it was kind of pre-molded as an elbow. So this one inch inside diameter pipe that I actually bought goes directly inside of that. And then you just put the hose clamps. This pipe comes all the way up to about right here. So it has really, really good um, fitment but I ran it down in between this coolant hose and your um, I want to say that's a power steering line and then it goes in between it goes above the steering shaft you definitely don't want that to interfere with the steering shaft and it goes to the right of the steering shaft and then down all right guys so we just now finished up the crankcase vent reroute um, we've got the intake piece done I'll show you that here in a second just like a final view of it and then we also have this hose ran. So it's a literally super simple. Two hose clamps, a piece of tube, another piece of tube that you already have, um, a cap, and a third hose clamp, and some JB Weld, and you're good to go. So right here, guys, we have the crankcase event reroute coming out. One zip tie, two zip ties. Down through here it goes. And of course, just you know, use your brain, run it however you'd like. Make sure it's not interfering with the steering column or anything like that. So we did get a bigger turbo and we will be running either 205s or 190s. We're going to be doing a fast fuel system, regulated return, uh, head studs, everything. Uh, our newest sponsor here on the channel is Blessed Performance. So we will be getting some parts from them along with some parts from Power Stroke Products um, as far as I know. But, you know, in the future that will show... We're, we're working on some really, really cool things. So y'all check out Blessed Performance. Matt Story, super, super good guy. Any kind of 6 related or anything diesel related, really, honestly. Um, check out Blessed Performance. I'll link their website down in the description box down below. 
Um, but yeah, we're going to be working with them on a few things. And then there's also another place that we're going to be working with on getting this thing to have some studs put in it and everything. So there will be a full video on bulletproofing this truck, bulletproofing. I hate saying that term, but that's the term that everybody understands. But anyway, we'll be doing all of the updates that are necessary for these 6 O's to stay on the road. Um, along with head studs and stuff like that to where we can push a little bit more power out of the truck Like I said, I would like it to be 700 to 700 ish capable um, But with just like a mild tune on it around 600 to 650 um, so I, I mean a daily driven 600 horsepower 6 l will be a super super fun truck to drive and especially since I'm not on the 40s anymore I'm just on the 35s that thing will absolutely rip. So we've got a lot of awesome content coming soon guys um, I may not be posting for like a week or two because we're about to head to the beach, but whenever I get back, it's full swing. We've got rod runs in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee as well that we'll be showing the truck at. We've got a lot of updates coming. New grill, new exhaust, new exhaust tip, um, new hood, um, new turbo. And then, like I said, we've got a few things cooking up with Blessed Performance and Power Stroke products. So stay tuned to the YouTube channel, guys. Always remember, everybody starts out as nobody. Get down there, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Also guys, my turbo went out. A lot of people were asking me if I have like hard feelings towards KC or anything like that. No, I do not have anything against KC just because I will be working with a different company this time around. Does not mean that I have anything against KC. You know, it was their DIY 10 blade kit and I put it in March of last year. The trucks always ran great. Um, I've never had any issues out of the turbo whatsoever. Over the last couple of weeks and like the last couple of months really, I've had like a small oil leak on the truck and I'm almost 100% sure now that it's been coming from the turbo um, because it's like mainly whenever it's running and then it drips all the way from the top all the way down. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that it was coming from the turbo, that the turbo was passing oil so the seals had been out of it for a little while and were getting worse and worse and worse. I hadn't really noticed any white smoke, um, but again, I'm not putting Turbo Time USA at fault for anything to do with the solenoid. The solenoids have great reviews and the solenoids have had no issues like that at all. Nowhere close to that. Um, so again, no fault towards Turbo Time USA, no fault towards KC turbos. I ended up only getting about 6,000 miles out of my KC turbo and that's pretty much the end of it. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not going to put anybody at fault for that. I'm not going to say KC turbos is junk or anything like that. That's just my personal experience, and that's just one of the things that, you know, since everything in my life pretty much is filmed and recorded to an extent, um, anything that's truck-related anyway, that's just one of my experiences that I had, and I don't plan on putting um, that turbo back in. You know, the turbo wasn't really fixable, so I did end up sending it in as a core, and we have a new upgraded turbo, which you all will see in the next video. So I hope that clears some things up. Like I said, no hard feelings towards anyone whatsoever. It's just a truck at the end of the day, guys. And we're all trying to make a buck. And we're all trying to make the best products as we can. Uh, some companies try harder on that than others. And that's something that only time will tell. So we're going to try our options and try out something different. So I hope that clears some things up, guys. Yeah, just wanted to mention this at the end of the video.